Um, I was on a boat, listen, from Zanzibar, going uh, from Dar es Salaam, going to Zanzibar. My, my, my niece, Batuli, mm -hmm. called me and says, Professor has just died. I mean, that, that, that night or that morning. So I said, okay. So that's, that, I was on the boat. And I told her, I told her, I'm on the boat going to Zanzibar. Yeah, what went through your mind? Ah, uh, well, I tell you one thing, Jeff, a lot of things went through my mind. Because I, I have to explain to you first that Ali, I'm not actually a nephew. I am a, a Ndugu Wandugu. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, let me explain to you what I mean by that. My father, Sharif Abdullah Salim, was married to Ali's, uh, 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 the mother of Ali, Bibiesha, mm -hmm. and then had a sister called Madada. Madada was married to my father, produced three sisters. Now, I was related to my sister through my father. Mothers, no. Because mother was Mazrui, which was Ali and there. Yeah. But it, it didn't matter because my dad brought me up as her son. Because mm. she didn't have a son. She had only the girls. So uh, these were family. And once in the Mazrui family, you're, you're, you're in the family, you're a community. It's, communi it's a community. Yeah. Community within a community themselves. Mm. Mm. You understand? So mm. well, even though I, I, I had nothing to do with Mazrui's in, in my blood, but I was uh, 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 Ndugu and Ndugu. Mm. So I was, they, they took me as, 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 as one of them. The picture I just showed our viewers on the screen there, and taken circa 1960, you and, uh, and Professor Ali Mazri. That's a great photo, by the way. Great photo. Well, I was a young guy then, you can say, can tell <laughs> from the photo. But let me explain to you. Um, Ali, I, 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 I was going to England to, to study. My father was sending me to England. Now, he wrote to Ali and said, Ali, I'm sending Salim. My name was not Sal Davis, no, it's Salim. I'm sending Salim over to England and I'm sending him to you first to acclimatize himself and please take care of him. You understand? So that was the beginning of my journey to, to, to Ali. Now, I lived with Ali in the same room for three months. We had only one bed. Now, let me explain to you what I mean by this. Because if you say, you know, you, you slept on the same bed, you know, yeah. as a guy of, uh, the other day when I said, um, you know, we had only one bed. Oh, don't mention that. His name is Jamal Saeed. Uh, don't mention that uh, you slept on one bed. What? You know, yeah. he laughed. So, you know, but Ali never slept on a bed. You know why? Because from 11 o'clock at night, he was reading until morning, uh, 6 o'clock, when he would stop reading. He'd be sitting on a couch like this, there's a, 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 a bully, Yachai Apo, mm -hmm. and uh, Kikombe, and a Tiachai, and a Kuma, who can soma. I have, I mean, this, uh, I can see him now, what he was doing at the time. Yeah. I'd be fast asleep. Lucky for me, I went to England at the time, it was in the summer, because I went there June, July, August, September, I went to my college. Mm -hmm. yeah? And all this time, I was with, with Ali. Now, you know, people don't seem to know. Ali was not an extrovert. Ali was an introvert. He, he, he held things to himself. But Ali was good with me. He gave me an hour every day teaching me English. Every day. He said, Sal, sit. Sal, what was it? Sal, Salim. Salim. He said, Salim, sit. He said, one hour every day, mm. Professor gave me. So, I mean, you know, because when I went to my college, I was speaking better English than I when I went to, to England. So my college boys say, everybody in, in Africa speaks like you? I said, yeah, everybody in Africa speaks. I didn't know, I mean, you know. Yeah. I didn't know that maybe the Luo had their own accent, the Kikuyu had their own accent. Mm -hmm. I didn't come from that part, so I came from Obasa. So I didn't know. Yeah. But I said, yes. Then, you know, Ali instilled in me that, listen, you gotta do this. Your father sent you here, he spent money. You've got to do this. You've got to do this. I kept doing it. Mm. Now, Ali kept reading all through the night. I mean, he would recite poems. He would recite things that, that I have them until today. You remember them? Yeah, I do until today. For example, he'd do the shortest Shakespeare poem. In vain, in vain. 
the all composing hours resistless falls the muse obeys the power i don't know what it means mm. but I, 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 yeah, but i picked it up and then he say let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediment love is not love that alters when its alteration finds or bend with the remover to move i don't know what it means i swear to you jeff <laughs> but i recited you memorized it. i memorized it from ali wow ali used to do things that that a, a normal human being would be very now, now I, I don't want to be praising the man like he's something else but he is something else mm. that's all i can say now i i uh, i grew up in the mazuri families and uh, uh ali was much older than me ali was, like you say you know he's, he was born in 80 yeah, in 30, 31 uh, 31 yeah which is 83 correct so i'm 73 so going 10 to years. 74 so 10 years but ali one <laughs> One thing about him, even when he comes for, when he came for holiday to Mombasa, Ali never forgot anybody. My sister Sharifa, who was uh, 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 the lady actually who ran everything in our house, not my mother, my dada. <coughs> Sharifa was the one running everything. So uh, Ali and Sharifa were so close, I think, same age, I think, maybe you know that's it. And uh, and and he would come to the house, Ali, coming from a holiday, and and talk to Sharifa, but Sharifa. Believe me, maybe the schooling wasn't so good. I didn't go to school that much. I uh, went to school with my mother. Sharifa went to school with my mother. My mm -hmm. mother was that young. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he would talk to her, you understand? So Ali never forgot anybody. All the family, he would know, he, he would know them by names. Name Jinahuyu, Jinalahuyu, Jinalahuyu. Definitely. You were saying earlier on, Sal, that um, he wasn't the brightest kid in school. No, no, I, uh, well, what I meant was that, for example, when he did his Cambridge certificate, he didn't get a, a first grade. He didn't get. And actually, it upset my father so much more than anybody else. Because my father uh, uh, loved Ali like a son. And then what happened is, now my father was sitting in the scholarships for the Arabs. Uh, 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 like uh, all the Arab kids, they'll go through them and see who gets a scholarship and who doesn't. He was on the board of that. Now, Ali didn't get a scholarship because Ali had not done well in his Cambridge. So for six years, Ali just languished. Didn't was not much he was doing in Mombasa. In Mombasa, you understand? Then what he did when they built this uh, Miome, which is Mombasa Institute of Muslim Education, Ali became a warden for six years. Now let me tell you, there's nothing that hurt Ali more than losing those sixty years. Mm. He lost those six years. six years. To him, he believed that he lost six years, which he could have done much, much more yeah. with his life. You also talk about a very poignant point. Um, one of his sons is blind. Yeah, Kim. Kim, I think, yeah. You see, what happened here, I was in England, and my daughter, Nicole, had a problem with his, her left eye, and uh, he had only like a 10% like a vision. So Ali came to find out about that. Oh, I tell you, Jeff, uh, this is a story that, that probably I, I, I could uh, uh, cry a bit. I mean, you know. Now, uh, when Ali heard about it, Ali wrote me a letter. And in that letter, he put a poem in that he wrote for his son. Hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. He wrote this poem for his son. Now, he says to me, Sal, what are you worried about? Your, your daughter has got a 20 vision or 10 vision sight. My son has just gone, lost his sight, blind. Now, this poem that Ali wrote, he says, he started my son, which in the, <laughs> I'll tell you the, the my son part about it. Uh, he, says, he says, my son, God always gives people gifts. God gave you a gift because having eyesight is God giving you a gift. Now today, God has decided he will take his gift away from you. My son, there's nothing you can do about it. You understand? But as I know you so well, my son, you will do well in life. I, I, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I cried like a baby when I read that yeah. poem. Until this very day, it, 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 it strikes. It brings it to you. Oh, kabisa, kabisa, kabisa. But anyway, that's what happened. Where, where is this young man now? He's still alive and probably maybe he might come with uh, to bury his father. I don't know. I know that they will, uh, uh, Ali will be here on a Sunday night 
Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Early sorry. Sunday. Saturday night uh, morning. He, they might come. I don't know. Uh, but I know his nephew, Alamin, is the one doing all the all the necessary things that are supposed to be done. Yeah. And they're coming together up to Mombasa on a Turkish airline. Mm. So he'll arrive like the, 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 the morning of Sunday. Mm. Saturday. And, and, and your whole family, all your people are in Kibokoni, is that where you yeah, are? Yeah, that's where we are. And this is by Fort Jesus, right around Fort yeah, Jesus? Yeah, Fort Jesus in the back. Mm. Uh, uh, that's where we, we uh, the Masrui family come. The well, the, the clan comes from Takaungu, really. But this is where, when they came to Mombasa, where we, we stuck ourselves. So, so people are all gathering there now? Uh, now, they've been gathering there for the last three, four days, five which, days. Which is kind of unusual in a Muslim r burial ritual, right? Well, you know, uh, Ali, I can understand him when he says he wanted to be buried in Mombasa. His father is there, his mother is there, and he wants to be there. Now we have, the Masruis have their own uh, burial place. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, like I said to you, I'm a Ndugu Ndugu, I'll be buried there. Uh -huh. My mother was buried there. My father was buried there, although he's not a Masrui, you know, understand? But he married a Masrui, so he's entitled to be buried there. So he was, he, he was buried there. So uh, Ali, this is where he's gonna be buried. The father, the, you know, like, uh, that's the way it is. Yeah. And people, yeah, it's unusual for the Muslims to keep somebody that long. But the reason is here that Ali had written in his will. And he insisted, and that I knew before he died, that Ali was going to be buried in Mombasa. Mm. I knew that. Yeah. Understand? So we, we, we accepted it. We didn't expect, uh, expect it to be, uh, take this long. Mm. We thought maybe it might take two or three days. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's taken a bit longer than it should have. How has the news been received in Kibakoni in the, in the whole area? Well, Ali is a conglomerate. I mean, you know, uh, his, his, his death is, 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 brings out ripples <laughs> in everywhere. Forget Kibakoni alone. Mm. I mean, I'm talking about Mombasa itself. Yeah. The ripples, and I, I, I can just see the burial. It's, it, it's going to be massive, massive it's, it's burial. It's going to be huge. Oh, definitely. Mm. I, I, I'm... Uh, I, I, I'm sure about that. Yeah. I'm sure about that. Yeah. yeah. The one thing that um, either he told you or, or, or you knew that really hurt him in his time, because mid-80s, he, alongside a very famous Nigerian writer, Wale Shoyenka, were literally, they were neck and neck. In they everything. were neck and neck. Yeah. In 1986, Wale Shoyenka wins a Nobel yeah. Prize in yeah. Literature. Yeah. Well, once the Nobel Prize had been given to Wale, it could not be given to Ali. Because they are on the same path, mm. same subjects. Yeah. So it was difficult. It, it hurt Ali, I'm mm. sure about mm. that. Mm. You understand? Because like, like it hurt Ali, uh, like for example, if he had those six years, probably yeah. he'd have won the uh, Nobel Prize before Wallace Young, but he lost six years. Now, there are people who knew Ali better than I. I mean, there's a guy in Mombasa today, in Malindi, Abdullah Bujra. Bujra and Ali were very close. There is uh, 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 Mohammed Haider, Professor Haider, very close to Ali. There is uh, uh, Muhammad Abdurrahman uh, Ali, who we know him as Panya, you know, very close to Ali. What did so, they call him Panya? Yeah, they call him Panya because he was a small little fellow when he was a kid. <laughs> okay. You know, so he was a little guy, little guy, you know, for going around saying, Panya, Panya, I don't know, they used to call him Panya. So, I mean, you know, it's stuck. Because yeah. I remember one day we were sitting in a baraza somewhere. We go at night. Salim Juma, the late Salim Juma was there. And a, a guy came to look for Muhammad Abdurrahman. And the guy says, what? Says, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to find Muhammad Abdurrahman bin Ali. He said, no, we don't know anybody here, that name. And that's the truth. Mm. We don't know that anybody, that name. And then Salim said, Juma, hello, uyo anamtaftapanya ban. Oshona. Salim Juma na Mobia. Hello, sema panya bwana. Usumbua hapa Muhammad Abdurrahman alipo Abdurrahman. He's still alive, but and he's watching this program. I'm sure about it. Panya anatazama hii. Anatazama hii program leo. He's also in the 80s. Near 80s. He's older than I am. But we also lived together in England. We had we shared a room together with with Panya in England. So these are the guys who knew who knew Ali well. You was telling me, uh, 
I think a couple of uh, shows ago, um, when you were auditioning for, for one of your shows, I think one of the big auditions you had. Well, not audition, what I did, I went to, for the talent competition talent, in Manchester. Yes. Mm -hmm. in Manchester mm -hmm. And I won it. So I got a prize, I got some money. So what I did no, the no, first... You're, you're summarizing this. Huh? I mean, how did you win it? I, come, I was good, man. Would, I was good. What would you sing? This is my island in the sun, Ooh. where my people have toiled since time begun. I may sail on many seas, the shores will always be home to me, oh, island in the sun. That's what I want the will to me by my father's hand. Hey, don't, don't, don't sing me, because then I won't get any job, because you're, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I, I want a prize. Right. Now, we used to cook. Let me tell you what we used to do. <laughs> We had this one room, yeah. and there was a small little geezer that we used to cook. Now, we used to cook a whole, uh, 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 how do you say, mchuzi mm -hmm. for a whole week. We cook it in the pot, and we leave it. Leave it in the pot. Yeah, leave it in the pot and put it in the fridge, right? Every day, we uh, heat it up, mm. eat a little bit, bring a bread in. No microwave? No, what, microwave <laughs> in the 60s. We're talking about microwave in the 60s. <laughs> So you take out a little, heat it. Yeah, eat, eat it, it, and then the next day, say, like that. And uh, you know, I, I used to do all the uh, all the chores because Ali was reading. And, uh, oh my God, uh, I, I can't explain <laughs> to you uh, about this man because I, I've never known a man to read that much, and that's why he became so. Uh, that's why he was so good. You didn't finish about the pots. How many did you win? Uh, I, I don't know how much I won. I think I won about twelve pounds. <laughs> Well, the, yeah, I went 60, 12 pounds was not bad. I was getting 25 pounds from my dad every month. I live on that. You know, what are you talking so, about? So this was a, a 60, king's birthday. Yeah, it was good, very good for me. So you went and bought some pans? I went and bought some pots and pans, you know, <laughs> the house. But that was, that was then. I oh, could just see, I, yeah. sitting on the couch and, uh, and drinking tea. He was a tea lover. Mm. And a pot was there boiling all yeah. the time gonna talk more about that so i want to take a break because you, you, you knew things about this man that very few people ever will man i mean well I'll, I'll tell you more as we as we come back oh right you do that and uh, you gotta write a book someday uh, well me uh, now I, listen i saw your book today if you write a book <laughs> so can i i'm gonna write a book <laughs> no, I'm just, that's what i keep saying sir. if i can do it yeah well not everybody can do it no. <laughs> But if you can do it, so can I. There I'm going to try. There you go. <laughs> Sal Davis, folks. What a superstar. And to have been in the footsteps, in the presence of the late, great professor Ali Mazrui. That is something else. That's incredible. That's the best. That's, a, that's amazing. Can't ask for anything better. No. True. What a man. What, man. what a man. Oh, my. Oh, my. Keep tweeting. At Kainanga Jeff. The hashtag is JKL. Tonight. It's all about the late, great Professor Ali Mazrui, remembering a true patriot and a legend. JKL, live from La Pruña d'Oro in the Intercontinental Hotel. We'll be back in a moment.